Hey there, it's James with Carp Speeds, and we have some bad weather. <laughs> so we're under a tornado watch, not warning, uh, until one in the morning. And it looks sunny, but there is a bunch of rain that's coming down and some storms moving through. So what a great day to get in the garage and do some bee projects if it can't be out in the apiary. So um, I have a project that I put off for quite a while and I want to get to it and now is a perfect opportunity. Here it is Memorial Day so uh, we have the day off of work and we have time to do it. So uh, several years ago I saw a video about a way to rear queens that did not involve grafting and at the time you know it seemed pretty interesting to me and I said someday I might do that. Um, so uh, that combined with the fact that I actually need queens now. A lot of people are asking me, hey, do you rear queens? And I don't, I do a lot of walk away splits and if there's extra queen cells in a hive, I will try to save them. So occasionally I have extra queens, but it hasn't been a thing I've really focused in on. So um, I don't wanna do grafting. Uh, I don't wanna make a big investment in more equipment. Maybe I'll do that in the future. I know other people do that. And it does require quite a bit of skill and good eyesight to do grafting. So this is a way to do queen rearing without grafting. So if you're looking for a grafting video, this isn't, isn't for you. Um, so let me just describe the method that I remember hearing on the internet. And I will give credit to whoever put the original YouTube video together. It's just been a few years, so I gotta go dig it up. I'll put it in the comment section. So make sure you check that out in addition to this. But um, let me describe the method. So basically you're gonna have your standard 10 frame box. I can figure these uh, at, with nine frames like some people do. So, uh, but the point is, is you're going to have a box. It's going to be full of bees, filled out frames, but the trick is it's queenless. So basically what you're doing is you're setting up a queen rearing box. So again, standard deep box to start with. Again, all full of bees doing their thing. Then what you're going to do is you're going to get a couple frames. Um, so the trick here with these uh, frames is um, the first one, it really doesn't matter. It can be empty. It doesn't have to have anything. Actually, it needs to be empty. So you would take this frame and you would just set it here on top of your 10 or 9 frame configuration. And this is going to be blank and empty just like it is. And then you're going to take a frame that has comb only, no foundation, and it has eggs. So what you're going to do is you're going to look through this comb uh, that has eggs in it, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to find the smallest, tiniest, newest eggs you can. You're going to take an eraser head on a pencil, and you're going to push the cell walls away from your selected egg. And you can do several of those on a frame depending on the number of eggs that you have. So once you push those all away, and I'll show this later, uh, I'll splice in a little video of that. Um, this is essentially gonna be your queen rearing frame. Again, it needs to be foundationless. It can't have foundation because you're gonna have to cut out those eggs when they develop. So basically, again, nice egg in there going to carefully push all the cell walls away, create an indentation with an eraser on a, on a pencil. Once you do that in a bunch of places on that frame, you're going to carefully take that frame, and you're going to turn it upside down. So remember, this, this one's empty. There's nothing in it. It's just sitting here. And you're going to place this one on top of it. And then what's going to happen is the bees are going to come up, and they're going to treat those because they're queenless, right? So they're looking to make queens, but they're going to pick those cells that are a little bit bigger, and they should, again, according to this video that I watched, create queen cells from those. They may create, create even more queen cells than what you did that for, but that's the idea. So again, I'll show videos of what that actually looks like. I just wanted to describe that procedure um, before we get into the build here. So, so again, you're gonna have a frame like this, a frame like that on top of it. So, so the first thing you realize is, well, this box doesn't quite work for that because, you know, again, it's going to have all its regular frames in here. So you need what, you know, a shim, basically. So you need another little thin box that's deep enough to hold a couple frames, maybe plus one. And that's also a little bit longer 
uh, than than a normal box, so that we can actually accommodate, you know, the holder of a normal deep frame. Again, if you're doing mediums, just adjust for mediums, okay? So we're, that's what we're gonna create today. So we're gonna create a second little shallow box that's gonna go on top of here. It's gonna have a slightly, um, it's gonna be slightly deeper than a normal box. And then the other thing you wanna do is in this extra space here, this is an opportunity to feed this queen rearing box. And that's really, really important from everything I've read related to queen rearing is you need to give them feed. So you can do that, you know, in a frame feeder, if you want to do that. You can set, you know, a jar or two in here of sugar water to feed them, however you want to do it. Um, and then what you do, once you have everything established, is you cover this all with, you know, with some burlap or, or something to keep everything really nice and tight and warm in here. Um, and that'll help drive that queen rearing process. Well, that's the theory anyway. So that's what we're going to attempt. There's a lot of ways to do queen rearing. This one just seemed the most interesting to me. I don't know why. Um, because it really doesn't involve, other than the shim, creating much new equipment. And, and having to go this will be an experiment. You know, we'll test and learn here and see if it works. If it's a bust, it's a bust, and I'll report those results. So, all right, let's get into this one. Okay, so how am I going to build this shim? Well, uh, some of you might know that the price of wood has gone up, so I've become the king of using cedar pickets for a lot of things that I normally would buy regular wood, you know, planks of wood for, or dimensional lumber for. But uh, I find that cedar works really well. Bees like cedar, has been my experience, and it's relatively inexpensive. And pickets just seem to give me a lot of variety of sizes and stuff to work with. So um, I went ahead and picked a uh, 5 8 thick piece of cedar. So it's a little bit more than what I normally would get. But for this, uh, I wanted something a little, little nicer. Um, and these are actually, let's see, I think they're 5 and, yeah, 5 and 5 8 of an inch deep. And I think that'll be just, just about perfect here for what we need. So, you know, I imagine we'll have these two frames on here and then a little room here to cover you know lightly cover this with some burlap um, so to keep these frames warm while the queen rearing process is going on so again so I'm going to use um, some cedar pickets here for that and I've had these in a garage laying flat for quite a while so I'm pretty confident that they're dried out and that they're not going to warp too bad so that's the other thing with cedar you got to Kind of keep an eye on but if you imagine here you know i think that we're going to just you know the the depth here or i'm sorry the width here is just fine uh it's the length that we're going to adjust so what we'll do is probably just build this out again enough so that you know these will just lay in here nicely yeah, so let's uh let's let's give this a shot so we'll do some measurements here and go ahead and make some cuts and go from there. So let's do our short cuts first. I know I think I'm breaking a rule there, but I have plenty of wood, so we should be okay. All right, first two cuts. Not too bad. Let's see if these line up. Yeah, that'll do. All right, so these will be our end boards. So again, if these are like this, we'll just set these up here for reference. Right, and so now we know approximately how far out we need to take this. So it's looking to me like we're gonna take, want to take this basically so that this is on the outside. So let me see if I can show you that over here, over my shoulder. Yep, 
Yeah, so basically what we want to do is have one box that overhangs the edge here just a bit. Actually, like perfectly right there. So that's okay. So the long pieces will just have to go from here to that edge. This actually makes measurement pretty easy because it's going to be exactly... Look at that. So we're looking at 19 and 3 eighths. Just shy of 19 and 3 eighths. I think that'll work. So we'll do some two cuts, 19 and 3 eighths. So here's what we got. Let's make sure that this works. So again, if we were to imagine this on here and butt it up nicely, that we would have, yeah. So that would hang just over. And again, we know that that is going to fit right inside there. Very nice. OK. All right, just a reminder, uh, wear your safety equipment. Follow all safety rules. Sometimes that means not doing what I do. All right, so it looks like this will work now. We got perfect. All right. Again, let's imagine we have a box full of frames and bees at the bottom here. We put this spacer in, sideways open frame, and then we have this frame full of comb and eggs. So imagine that that's full of comb and eggs, and we would set that over there. The worry is, you know, this one has some wire running through it, but what if it doesn't and the comb sags? So the thinking is, why don't we just put, you know, a dowel in here that can provide a little support in case that comb sags. So when you're putting this on, you'd have to put the spacer on, set this over it, and go from there. So thinking here is, as far as a design, is you would want, let me even this up, you'd want this frame flush to the wall and kept to the wall, I believe, or thereabouts. So what we would do is we would if you see, I put a little a couple notches there. Is we notch this out so that this actually goes down just a little bit on this frame, um, so it doesn't keep that egg frame up so high. So 
All right, let me show you where we're at. So what we did is we went ahead and placed the dowels in here evenly spaced. So this one's you know through the center. These two are five inches apart. And the other thing that um, I thought about was now that we have these bars here, what we can do is we can use this space here to set feeder jars if we need to. Now if you're using a feeder, you know, in frame feeder, a frame feeder, you won't need that. But what I could do is just, you know, glue a few little dowels across here, a couple dowels across here, and you can just set a bottle right on there and allow the bees to feed. And again, you want to feed pretty heavy when you're doing queen rearing. So, so right now what I did, I don't know if you can see, but there's some glue on here. I just put some glue to kind of hold this in place. We'll let that dry. And then what we'll do is we'll nail these into place from the outside in. So that'll take care of that piece of this. And I think I could just go ahead and lift this off right now. You see how easy that lifts off. And we have the little cutouts here. So that fits across this frame right here. And then again, we'll just demo this for the moment. And I'm being careful because, you know, I don't want to jostle the glue too much. That's just exactly what I'm doing. So there we go. So again, imagine this is a frame, you know, full of eggs and wax, no foundation. You could just set this in here and let them build those eggs down. They'll feed them, do whatever they need to do because they're a queenless hive. And put your feeders here. Maybe set another medium box on here or even a deep box. Pack it with whatever you need to keep it warm. I'd recommend, you know, like coffee bags. You know, you can buy those at most farm and fleet type of places. But just burlap or something to keep it nice and warm up here on top absorb any moisture and you know put your lid on I think you're good to go so uh, 16 days from egg to queen so keep that in mind that is the key to queen rearing so you know we talk about the box and how to support this but you know you put those eggs in and then you're gonna have to come in probably day 14 day 15 lift this frame up see how the eggs are doing they're probably close to emerging, so you just take your knife, I would imagine, and cut out the eggs that uh, that you want to, or the cells that you want to save. Put those into queenless hives or in another location, uh, so that you know she doesn't emerge and kill her sisters, which is exactly what uh, the queen would do. So just keep an eye on that. So we'll take more videos as we try this thing out, but I think this shim's going to work really, really nicely. So. There you have it. Got my safety gear on here. So um, I'll go ahead and let this dry, do a little bit more video. But uh, for now, this is James with Make It Happen Greenhouse and Cars Bees. Thanks for watching. Okay, while we're building our queen rearing box, we're waiting for some stuff to dry, some glue to dry. I thought it'd be a good time to go ahead and show you how to stamp your wood if you have a stamp. So first thing I would recommend is getting one of these types, type of uh, torches. So I use the Map Pro here, and this is getting pretty light. This might run out midway through, we'll see. And then to light my smoker, I don't use this, I use this cooking torch. And um, you know, essentially, you just turn this on. Make sure you're doing this on the cement, away from anything flammable. If you tilt this too much, it'll actually shut off. It takes quite a while to heat up. You can hold it if you're careful. Just kind of move around the surface of this. Real nice and hot. What you're looking for is an iridescent color on the metal. And it, it does take a while.
give it a shot. Super hot, remember. So here we go. Looking for smoke. A little. Usually counts about 10. Yeah, see what it did. Hey, hey, look at that. Let's give it another go. Looks promising. Voila. Let's do a box. You do gotta rock a little because sometimes the wood's a little warped. Especially if you want to get the numbers on here. Knots are not helpful. <laughs> Sometimes the wood around knots has sap and doesn't stamp very well. Alright. This is going great. So we're going to had a little debacle with the glue. Decided to stamp. I should have waited for the glue to dry and it didn't. And that caused everything to get out of whack. So I'm going to go ahead and actually drill these dowels in. So we just have to remeasure everything. This could be a complete mess. See if we have the same luck on the other side. No guarantee. All right, moment of truth. I don't see anything split, do you? So imagine here that we are actually, you know, doing our queen rearing. We got a bunch of bees in here. We've set this thing on here. We know we got to put our queen rearing box in here. So we're going to carefully place it so that it holds that space or frame in there. Even things out, which we've done. Take our lovely frame of eggs that we have already mashed down now those we would want those to be facing down so we'd go ahead and gently set this set this in here position it bees can come up and do what they need to do now we would want to put feeder some feed on so let's actually solve for that right now set this on here like this so we'll cut a hole here and here. So we'll just be like this. Yes, yes. Okay. And for good measure. And you see there's just a little lift on that. That's what happens. So here's what we'll do to fix that. So you see what we 
got here. So now we got our feeder on here. So I'm going to gently try to pound these in with a brace underneath so these don't jostle too much. And then we'll glue on the bottom and let that dry. That should hold it in place. How does that look? Pretty good. Bees would probably do it for us. Okay, yeah, so we'll let that dry. And then, um, you know, maybe I'll just put a little decoration or something on here besides the logo. Because it is a queen ring box after all. So you got to give it something special. little decoration just for fun all right once that all dries we'll stain these well the rain continues so we're back in the workshop and we're finishing up our queen rearing box and really the only thing to finish up with it is the staining so what better thing to do on a dreary rainy day we're hoping this investment of rain yields a whole bunch of plants that are gonna just pop and the bees are gonna get all over it so because we know we'll go into summer here in Kansas and we may not see a drop of rain for quite a while. So, uh, but uh, hey, uh, I do all my boxes in, uh, there's one down there, um, with this gel stain. So just wanted to share that with you real quick. I'll bring that up. So it's this uh, Minwax gel stain. And I have found that uh, this works really well. It's easy to apply. It's a one-step process. It takes a little longer to dry than paint. Um, but once it's in there, it seems to seal these boxes up pretty darn good. So just as an example of that, you know, this is a brand new box that I'm just now letting dry. But over here, I'm creating a, uh, a trap-out box. And this is an older one. And you can see... I mean, this has been in the field for, you know, a couple years. And, you know, we got a little nick there, it looks like. But uh, it's, it's holding up pretty good. So, yeah. So, you know, maybe once every three, four years, I'll pull these out of service and restain them, sand them a bit, clean them up, whatever. Uh, and hopefully uh, they'll have a good long life before you got to buy new ones. So I'm going to use that on this queen rearing box as well. And we have some little decorations we put on there to make it fun but excited to try to make some queen cells with this no grafting technique so I'll get back to staining here <laughs> 